I'm Gemma and this is Non-Fic Books and today I have a review video for you and that's Lucinda Hawkley's March Women March. And I'm going to read you the subtitle because it's quite long. Voices of the Women's Movement from the First Feminist to Votes for Women. And this was published in 2013 by Andrew Deutsch and is 247 pages long. Um, you may have seen this on my top 16 books that I'm looking forward to read in 2016. And I was not disappointed in this. I read it all in one evening, so I think that goes to show how much I was enjoying this. And also something about her writing, because I just did not want to put this book down. Lucinda Hawksey is a um, lecturer in literature and art history. And in this book, she's looking at a number of women and to, to increase the number of women who are discussed when women's suffrage is discussed because it's very easy for everyone to fall into the pigeonhole of just thinking about um, the Pankhursts or maybe Fawcett but not too many other women who were involved and obviously there were an enormous number of women both involved in the organising of events and the fight for women's suffrage and then um, actually partaking, going to the um, marches, buying the merchandise, wearing the colours and um, I think that's something that can sometimes be forgotten a little bit because of these very forceful and really interesting characters who were right at the head of the fight for women's suffrage. In throughout this book, um, Lucinda Horsley looks at a lot and quotes, which is really interesting, a lot of original sources, people's diaries who were involved, speeches that were given, letters between people, articles that were published and it's really interesting to hear um, the actual campaigners own voices coming across and their arguments for why they are involved in this and also sometimes why people were involved in the anti-suffrage movement because she does discuss that in this which I thought was absolutely fascinating because it's hard to get your head around why women would have fought in the anti-suffrage movement um, it's, it seems so obvious and right to us nowadays, um, but it's just mind-boggling. And it's also totally mind-boggling that this was only not that long ago. Um, and it's something that I think is fantastic to read about and to remember, because we're very, very lucky in this country. This may not have been all that long ago, but there are still people throughout the world who are having to fight this sort of fight. And I think it's really important to remember why what happened in the past did happen and why it's important that we still pay attention to feminism and don't lose a lot of the things that people have fought and given their lives, lives for over the history. There's one quote that I just want to read which is from a man who was involved in the anti-suffrage movement and it was the amount of opposition with which the advocates of women's rights have had to contend would have killed any movement had that movement not been founded upon an unshakable moral idealism. For men to hold in their hands the fortune and lives of women is a mockery and denial of liberty. Democracy knows no sex. That was Ronald H. Kidd by 1912. And I think that could be a quote that is still very applicable in this day and age and needs to be remembered. Listen to Hawksley's writing is so enjoyable. It's not an in-depth book. This is a really good sort of introductory guide which places the sort of fight for suffrage in a wider context, she looks at some of the um, international fights for suffrage, as well as the um, wider number of groups who were involved, not just the WSPU, um, which was the more militant suffragettes that we are very familiar with nowadays. Um, but she also talks about the suffragists and the wider movement behind the suffragettes as well. Um, I just thought this was a really, really great book. It's definitely inspired me to read more about this subject. So if you've got any suggestions, and especially Lil, if you're watching this, if you've got any suggestions, because I know this is your thing, please leave them down below, because I'd really like to read more after reading this book. Um, I just thought this book made the fight very, very human. She discussed a lot of women who were involved in it, and it really sort of brought home how much people were fighting and how much they were risking by trying to fight for something that a lot of these women never saw in their own lifetime because the fight went on for so long. And also with what sense of humour they kept fighting. And I mean, they had a wonderful selection of 
um, merchandise that you could buy to help support and fund the WSPU. And one of them is that, which is a Pankasquith board game where you have to get a suffragette out of the home and parliament and you it's a bit like snakes and ladders you can be sent back to home to avoid the police or you can climb up the ladder by blowing up a post box or things like that and i think that that is just absolutely wonderful um and really nice to see the sort of human side and sense of humor with which such a serious fight was being brought home i really recommend this book Obviously, if you know absolutely tons about the fight for suffrage and the fight for votes for women, you probably don't need to read this book. I mean, I think it would still be a really interesting, enjoyable read because her writing is lovely and I will definitely be checking out some of her other books because she has one on Princess Louise and on Lizzie Siddle and I think both of those should be really interesting. Um, but I recommend picking up this book um, if you do not know anything about suffrage. I think this is a really, really good starting place. I thoroughly enjoyed it and think that you should all go check it out as well. So that's my thoughts on this book. If you've got any comments or questions, leave them down below and any suggestions, I would really like to hear those and hopefully I'll see you in a video soon. Bye.